Uh, hey there, fellas. Today we're coming at you with a new episode and some new ideas. Let me tell you, you're in for some absolute lunacy. So here's the deal. It's all actually quite simple. Nowadays we see a bunch of people all over the place who do engine conversions. In our day and age you have the opportunity to get a German car and swap it to a Japanese motor, or vice versa, swap a German engine into a Japanese chassis. So, as you might imagine, there is a lot going on, and that's great. I mean, at least it sort of motivates you to stay sharp. I actually gotta give props to all the people out there who are into these sorts of things, as in customizing, building all sorts of projects, modifying the suspension, gearbox, engines, and so on. It's all very interesting, and I'm definitely on the same page as you guys. All right, so we've already seen a ton of different builds, of all shapes, sizes and colors. The Japanese motors are especially popular, given that they're so fun and sophisticated. German engines also aren't half bad. You might ask where I'm going with this. So the point of an engine swap is in its name. You're basically just replacing the motor, even if you were to install the same engine as before. Even that counts as an engine swap. So yeah, it's all pretty simple. So here we have a car, and over here we have a motor. The engine is from a Zeal 131 truck, with some Ural truck pistons. We've been arguing whether it's a 6 or 7 liter. Leave us a comment if you know the displacement of this engine. Anyway, we're gonna be installing this engine into this car. Can you even imagine the effort we're gonna have to put into this? It's an insane amount of work. Right, fellows, time for us to shoehorn this motor into this here car. It should be a straightforward swap. And then we go tear up the road. Let's do this. Swapping a 7-liter Zeal truck engine into a Lada. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, fellas, check out what we've got here. For the time being, we've merely test-fitted the motor inside the engine bay. We actually just kind of slapped it on. And immediately we see that... That looks all right. Everything's looking good. The only thing is that we're all walking around the car in circles. And some of us are actually a bit worried that the tires might explode. Seriously, though, guys, you can see for yourselves what's happened to them. It's all down to the weight. But then again, this motor doesn't weigh all that much. So the stock engine in here weighs approximately 120 kilos, while this one is about 450. That's not that big of a difference. 300 kilos, give or take. So we good, yeah. Now we have to figure out what to hack, what we'll need to weld on, in order to get this motor to sit evenly in there, so that everything looks nice and tidy. As you might imagine, the hood might become a bit of an issue. But then again, will we even need a hood? That's something for us to figure out. This is actually starting to get pretty interesting. I say we carry on and see where this all goes.
Okay, so after going back and forth a bit, we had a gauze gearbox lying around. And after a bit of deliberation, we've decided that it's too small and that it's not fit for this application. The torque from the Zeal motor is just too much for it to handle. We've decided to go with something a bit more durable. This gearbox is from a Zeal 131 truck. It's a much more robust unit. The drawback being that it's quite a bit bulkier. This calls for some weight reduction by means of removing the transfer gear. Looks like the jack is stuck. Pull it out. Here, you try pulling it out. So here's what we're looking at. The engine is sitting in there nicely. All we have to do now is fire it up for the first time. We've hooked up a few things. Hey man, if you want, I can give it some gas from here. It's fine. Are you sure? You'll be activating the starter motor. Just make sure a nut doesn't hit you in the forehead. Oh, the starter motor is the easy part. Anyway, we've sort of rigged it all up. I'm not sure yet whether the battery is up to it. The battery's good. Let's give it a try then. Okay, let's do this. What the hell? Looks like it's hitting something. Where do you think you're going? Something flew right into my face. Well, you start the engine then, and I'll do throttle. Just as you predicted. That's how it should have gone in the first place. Looks like we have an oil leak. An oil leak? Yep. Oh yeah, right. So what is that? Maybe it's the... It could be the hose from the mechanical pressure gauge. What, this hose? It could be the pressure gauge, yeah. We should screw it out and block it off. This is how it always goes with the first fire-ups. Yeah, you're right, the pressure gauge probably was mechanical. That's usually... They usually have copper tubing. Maybe only the adapter. You might be right. I'm not too sure myself. Anyway, we'll block it off and try starting the engine again. Okay, so we've blocked off the tube, using a bolt and a clamp. Should work fine. Okay, here we go again. Are we doing this or what? All right, we have another geyser. Didn't I specifically ask you whether that would leak? You told me it wouldn't. You were like, nah, it's all good. How am I supposed to block it off anyway? So over here we have an oil... Check this out. So over here... That's routed to the air compressor. Oh, for God's sake. Well, I'm glad that we have oil in there. Oh man, we're gonna need another bucket of sawdust. Okay, so we've blocked off geyser number two. 
We've taken another close look at everything, and hopefully there won't be any more oil leaks, but we're not quite sure. I guess we're just going to have to keep an eye on the motor. Okay, let's see where this goes. What the hell was that? That's enough. It is making some sort of weird noise. I don't get it. It does sound a bit suspicious. It's the oil system. There's still something spinning in there. Well, of course it's gonna spin. I reckon that's the gearbox spinning. That's what's making the noise. You think so? I do. Sounds like it's coming from here. I actually saw it spinning. All right, fellas, we actually did it. Installing... Actually, this isn't so much installing as it is an exercise in shoehorning the damn thing in. Anyway, it fits nicely. And now we have to tend to the suspension, steering components, pedals... Yeah, we definitely have more questions here than answers. But on the bright side, these things do help you stay sharp and focused. We'll obviously carry on with the build. We're gonna make this into something awesome. In the meantime, though, I think we should call it a day. We actually got quite a lot of work done today. And we are just getting started. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss what's happening to this car next. Write a comment, give us a thumbs up, or maybe even a thumbs down. It doesn't matter. Also, don't forget to visit our VK page and our Instagram. We constantly post a bunch of cool photos on those platforms. Okay, so that concludes today's episode. Again, watch, subscribe, leave some comments and suggestions. Catch you guys later! What the hell was that? That's the compressor. You think so? You can clearly hear it. Sounds like metal-on-metal -metal contact.